Welcome to the Research Methods Catch-Up series. We are on hypotheses looking in this session at experimental and correlational hypotheses. So what we're going to cover essentially is the difference between these two different types of hypotheses, a bit of assessment of your learning so far and some more practice writing hypotheses. OK, so we're just going to clarify. We looked at in a previous session the difference between a directional and a non-directional hypothesis in the sense that a directional looks for the direction of results and that's what it specifies, whereas the non-directional says something's going to happen but doesn't specify what that something is. Now, so far, we've looked at experiments in the context of writing a hypothesis and the experimental hypothesis. So in an experiment, what we're looking for is a difference between different groups or conditions of a study. That's to say the independent variables. For correlational research, the onus is different because we're looking for a relationship between different variables. So a little bit of an overview of correlations. So the purpose of a correlation is to see whether or not variables are related. So in correlations, we use the term covariables, where in experiments, we use the term IV and DV. Now, in a correlational piece of research, we've got a set of numbers that we need to analyze. These numbers relate to specific behaviors or variables that could affect behavior. So we've got quantitative data that allows us to establish whether or not a correlation exists. So we've got a couple of examples here. So a researcher may want to investigate whether the amount of money people spend and their mood is correlated in some way. A researcher might want to investigate whether the temperature correlates with the sleep quality. So do people sleep less the hotter that it is? Now, just to clarify the difference between correlations and experiments, there's a little table in your booklet next to question seven. So we've got some main features. So variables, what's being investigated, what kind of graph is going to be used and what the purpose of the hypothesis is for each of them. So what I want you to do is just pause the video here and have a go at filling in as much of that table as you can. OK, so let's just establish the difference. So in correlational research, the variables are referred to as the covariables. In experimental, it's the IV and DV. In correlations, what I'm investigating is relationships between these covariables. And in an experiment, what I'm investigating is differences. The graph used for correlational research are typically scatter graphs, whereas for experimental research, you might see bar charts. And what the focus is for the hypothesis in a correlational piece of research is the relationship between those covariables, that's to say how they're correlated with one another. Whereas for an experimental research, what we're looking for is the effect of a change in an IV on a dependent variable. So just to illustrate again the difference between correlations and experiments, we can take a look at a study that's carried out in two different ways, one in a correlational way and one in an experimental way. So we've got a psychologist was interested in investigating the effects of stress and illness. They generated stress scores and illness scores for two participants and assessed how these two sets of real numbers relate to each other. That's to say, what is the correlation between the two sets of numbers? In an experimental version of this study, a researcher allocated 10 participants with low scores for stress, e.g. 10 out of 50 or less, and 10 participants who had high scores for stress, e.g. 40 out of 50 or more. And the researcher takes the illness scores for all 20 participants and compares the low stress against the high stress condition. So you can see that in reference to correlation and experimental research, we can investigate similar things, but we do so in different ways. Let's just do a bit of a checklist. So for a correlational hypothesis, the focus is on how two covariables relate to each other. There's no inclusion of an independent or dependent variable because a correlation is essentially not an experiment. A correlational hypothesis can be written as a directional or a non-directional hypothesis. So if I'm specifying direction in a correlational hypothesis, I'm going to talk about 
positive correlation or negative correlation. And if it's non-directional, I'm going to talk just about correlation. Correlational hypothesis will still have null hypothesis, but the statement is going to be a statement of no correlation. So you've got five hypotheses on the screen here. Your job is just to decide if they're directional and non or non-directional. There's space there in your booklets to answer the question. You might also want to use that space just to make a note of these as well. So pause the video here and have a go. Let's take a look at the answers then. First one, participants who score high on an intelligence test will also score high on a confidence test. So that's obviously a directional hypothesis there because it's specifying the direction of the correlation. Two, the amount of play between a child and a caregiver is positively correlated with secure attachments. Again, that's a directional hypothesis because it states the direction of the correlation. Financial income is negatively correlated with how much money is spent on a luxury product. Product, sorry. Again, that is a directional hypothesis because it says the direction of the correlation. Remember what I said about in correlational hypothesis, the directional element is specifying positive correlation or negative correlation, or at least implying what that might be. Four, petrol levels are correlated with distance traveled in a journey. There's a non-directional hypothesis there because I've said they're correlated, so I'm saying they will be related in some way, but I haven't specified the direction of that correlation. And for five, there is a correlation between dental health and consumption of fizzy drinks. So again, we've got a non-directional version of that hypothesis there because there's no specifying what that correlation is going to be. Next job slightly different because this time I want you to pick out which is a correlational and which are the experimental hypotheses. So this space here in your booklet again for you to have a go at this. Here they are. So pause the video now and have a go at these. Okay, number one, participants who score high on a positivity test will also score high on an extraversion test. There we have a correlational hypothesis. Second, participants who consume more than 3,000 calories a day will sleep less than participants who consume less than 3,000 calories a day. So we're specifying difference there, so that's an experimental hypothesis. We've got participants in condition one, no sugar diet, will score higher for irritability than participants in condition two, the sugar diet. And again, we're specifying difference between two groups there, not relationships, so it's experimental. Four is a positive correlation between the number of hours of TV watched and aggression scores. And, you know, the clue's kind of there in the hypothesis, isn't it? It says correlation, so that's a correlational one. And then we've got there's a difference between the number of A grades on a test between class one and class two. That, again, is an experimental hypothesis. OK, so next job that I'm going to ask you to do is write a null hypothesis. So I'm going to put on the screen the hypothesis I want you to work with, which is participants who score high on a positivity test will also score high on an extraversion test. Now, there's space in your booklet next to question 10, just to have a go at this. So you might want to pause the video here. Now, the suggested answer will be there will be no correlation between scores on a positivity test and scores on an extraversion test. Remember we said it's not about difference for correlation, it's about correlation. Next one. So we've got there's a positive correlation between the number of hours of TV watched and aggression scores. So again, pause the video here and have a go at writing a null hypothesis for that one. And here's our answer. So there will be no correlation between the number of hours of TV watched and aggression scores. And it's just worth thinking, you can play with this a little bit, what 
obviously we've got a positive correlation specified so that's directional what would this look like as non-directional it would be something along the lines of there will be a correlation between number of hours to be watched and aggression scores Okay, on to Bowlby. So we've got Bowlby's research reported that 60 children who had spent time apart from their mothers due to tuberculosis prior to the age of four demonstrated lower achievement in schools. So your job is to decide what kind of hypothesis you're going to write for this study and then write it. So there's space in your booklet for you to do this. That's next to question 12. So pause the video for now. Now, what type of hypothesis? Right, hopefully you've got a correlational hypothesis here. So the version that we're looking for is a negative correlation. So we've got there is a negative correlation between the amount of time a child spends apart from their mother before the age of four and their low school achievement. OK, another one, we've got a psychological study recorded the number of hours that children spent in daycare setting from birth to three years old and asked each child's primary caregiver to rate their child for aggression. The study found that as the number of hours spent in daycare went up, the rare parents rating of aggression also went up. So can you use that information to write a hypothesis for this one? Again, it's in your booklet. So pause the video. And then we've got it. There's a positive correlation between the number of hours spent in daycare and the aggression rating of children by parents. Excellent work on that. I do hope that session was useful.